friends, family. I have another one. And I know what this is. I'm excited because I checked the mail. And I wanted to make sure it's the one. Oh, sorry for the vibration. Still don't have my workshop yet. Big long story, you know. I'm using my daughter's Lego table. But I will have it soon. I'm going to build one. But I have to lay flooring throughout the whole rest of the house first. And watch workshop is the last thing. New house is how it goes. All right. Yes, it's another Invicta. I know. I know. They're nice. But it's not none of the crazy ones. But this one's really nice. It is the Invicta Pro Diver Carbon Chronograph. All right, let's watch this video. Invicta is affordable craftsmanship. My name is Sandy, Sandy Lee, and I am uh, the chief designer of the Invicta watches. Details is one of the key points of Invicta watches. So you guys know the drill on this. This is the Invicta Carbon Chronograph. Now they call it that because it has a carbon fiber face. Now I don't know if it's real. I'd imagine it probably isn't. It's probably just uh, painted or machine turned, but it certainly looks fantastic. Now, um, I'm going to talk about price because I'm pretty proud of this one. This is a brand new watch. Um, MSRP for this model is basically about $500, $495. That's the MSRP. Now, take a guess what I paid. Now, I know it's an Invicta, right? Uh, and they are generally a little bit less expensive, but you get really good quality. You get quality watches. Uh, you, it's not Breitling quality, it's not Omega Seamaster quality or Omega Speedster uh, in this case, but it is good quality. You're getting a, a quality watch that is going to be uh, the equivalent of, say, like a Wenger or um, maybe some, um, what is it, like a, a Bulova, right? Uh, you know, today's Bulovas, not, not necessarily the ones from the 50s. And... That's the kind of quality that you know that you're getting with this. So $500 probably is a bit unreasonable, but it would not be out of the ordinary to expect to spend about 
$150, $175 for this watch. That would be a reasonable price for this Invicta. Um, and it's nice. I paid $58.30. So I did negotiate with the seller, the watch seller, um, and I'm pretty happy with that because this watch is fantastic. I love the look, I love the blue, I love the yellow. I have another watch that I recently purchased that had similar colors and it was atrocious. And this watch is all the things that I wanted it to be. Um, it is the, man, fantastic watch. Don't even know where I should start. So it is a hardened mineral crystal, but I believe it's sapphire coated. I will correct myself down at the bottom um, because I just happened to notice the thing. And remember, I do these videos blind and then I usually update them after the fact and add some additional features um, because it just makes it easier for me. I like to open them blind. I like to figure out what's going on. So if it wasn't obvious, I basically take two videos. I take my opening video I then say, hey, I'm gonna go find, find a, a video, and I immediately after take the second half. Um, so I'm gonna get right in the back because I wanna show that because I noticed some things in there. It says, uh, Master of the Oceans, but it also says Flame Fusion Crystal. So I'll do some research on that and figure out what that means. Uh, when I looked it up, I thought it said that it had a sapphire coated crystal. So I'll figure out what that means and I'll put it at the bottom. Um, this is a 100 meter uh, water resistant watch. So as you know, 100 meters is good for uh, pretty much swimming, some light snorkeling, uh, and anything else you want to do with it. And one of the things that's important too is that while it is a chronograph, it is 100 meters, and it has this... Um, um, Oh, it's killing me. This kind of strap. Not rubber, but um, silicon, a silicon strap, which is fantastic. Like, I think I can't... I'm actually going to like put it on here. It, it, it actually feels really good. I mean, I'll put it on completely, but I'm going to tell you right now, this is a watch I'm going to keep. Uh, I love the look of this watch. It is fantastic. I love the color coordination on it. This is excellent. I'm really happy with it. $58, you cannot go wrong. Um, let's see, bezel. It's got um, a little pip at the top and it rotates. It's, it's kind of hard, I, I'll admit, it's probably not something you would generally use, but I'll count the number of clicks and, and, and update it at the bottom so you can tell. Uh, unidirectional, but that's okay, it's really what this should be. Um, another interesting thing about this chronograph is a lot of these chronographs, they use the central second hand, and of course that's the, the hand coming from the center of the watch. They use that for the chronograph. But in this case, the sub-second at six o'clock is the one that's used. So I'm gonna start the chronograph right now. And you can see that it actually ticks quite well. So that's an example of one where the central second is used, um, but uh, this one, the sub second is used, and uh, I kind of prefer that personally. Um, I think I like the look of it because I like to see the second hand, and if I am going to actually use chronograph, uh, it's going to be so, so infrequent that the sub dial is, is perfect enough. So you hit the top button again once to stop it, and then you reset it, boom, and it goes right back. Uh, let's see what else can I say. It's got um, it's got rubber. Interesting. So it's got little rubber around. It's got little rubber pieces around the the buttons, which I thought was kind of interesting. So I'm not sure exactly why that is, but um, I guess it's for better grip or really just for style. But it seems to be the same uh, neoprene or whatever it is as as the uh, the strap. Um, I like the case. It is polished. I guess brushed at the top and polished on the sides, which I think is really fancy. Um, or not necessarily fancy, but just really sharp looking. Um, another thing that it mentions is the Trite Night Night Glow. So obviously that is the, uh, the loom. 
and I'm going to turn off the light and we're going to see if I can, if I can show if that shows well, it's bright out. So we'll see. Very cool. What I'll actually do, because I really want you guys to see it, I'm actually going to take a picture at night and I'll just post it right here so you can see it right next to it. Because I want you guys to get a good view of what that's going to look like. All right, let's start doing some measurements. So it's a little hard because it is a the strap is hard to keep it centered. So I'll do my best. I'm going to say this feels like a 43. 45, totally wrong. It's about a 40, 48. Uh, I think I did that wrong, but it's about 48. Um, the lug, and you can swap the bands, of course, is about 24. Depth, what, maybe 13? 12 and a half. So it's not bad, lug to lug. And it does have a screw down back. Lug to lug is about 53. Um, but but very nicely uh, machined. I mean, I'm really happy with it. Uh, you know what? I'm going to take this off because I am going to keep it. So, I mean, at that price, I could make money on it. But why when you've got such a great watch? I mean, I'm not going to wear this to mow the lawn or anything. But, you know... This is a nice watch to have. If I want to go to the beach, this is perfect. Um, perfect. So, all right, what else can I talk about? Oh, wait, you guys want to see how much it weighs. All right, let me take this off because this adds a little bit and I want to be true to it. We'll say 127.5 to, to round it up. So not bad, it's got some good weight to it. Um, what am I forgetting? It's got the date down at the 430 location. Um, fantastic strap, it, it really is. Um, but you could pretty much put anything on here. I bet this would look great with a nylon strap as well. I'll put a picture of that up there. Ah, the movement. Okay, so as you guys know, almost every other um, Invicta dive watch that I've put up. They do have usually a Japanese, I think it's a Miyota, a PC32A. You know, it's not a bad movement, but it's not a great movement. It's basically just an inexpensive uh, ladies movement, because that's usually what it is that they put in a man's ca man sized case. Um, it, it's what it is. It works. So... Um, it's not like a car, right? You're not going to put a V8 in a Corolla unless you really need to, but what's the point, right? Because it's just going to go... Um, so, but this, it'll probably have a different movement. I haven't opened it yet. I will, and I'll post pictures up here that you can see, and I'll put them at the bottom. But I expect that because of what this is, being a chronograph, it's probably going to have a slightly nicer movement. I'm guessing it's probably going to be a Seiko SII slash Epson movement. Um, so... Let me go ahead and put it on just so I can show off. It's a rather large strap, uh, probably a little bit bigger than I prefer. I have seven and a half inch wrist, but uh, a very large person bigger than me could probably easily wear this. Um, looks good though. This is great. You could definitely use this as a dive watch if you wanted to, because the strap is certainly big enough. Um, so. I'm really happy with this. All right, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps me out. Um, I don't make any money. I really just waste a lot of money on these videos, but this will certainly help me. So thank you very much.